students we have already studied the meaning of human capital human resource development and economic growth in part 1 of human capital formation we have also covered the sources of human capital formation and the significance of human capital formation was also discussed in part 1 now let's see the human capital formation part 2 after going through this lesson the learners will be able to understand the following human capital formation issues and problems human capital formation in india education sector in india elementary education and major government initiatives in school education sector higher education gender equality in education and various major initiatives in the health sector in this module we shall analyze the state of human capital formation in india we have seen that human capital formation is the outcome of investment in education health on the job training migration rural development and information and communication technology education and health are two most important sources of human capital formation in a developing country like ours which a large section of population living below poverty line many of whom do not have access to basic education and healthcare facilities moreover a substantial section of our people cannot afford to reach good quality healthcare and higher education furthermore when basic education and healthcare is considered as a right of the citizens then it is essential that the government should provide education and health services free of cost for the citizens and those from the socially oppressed classes both the union and state governments have been stepping up the expenditures in education sector over the years in order to fulfill the objective of attaining the cent percent literacy and considerably enhance the average educational skills of indians human capital formation let us see what are the issues and problems that we have building a productive and efficient human capital stock is integral to e rapid economic growth and development of an economy however there are certain issues and problems which hinders the progress of human capital formation the resources allocated to the formation of human capital are far short of what is required due to this the facilities for the formation of human capital have remained inadequate there is lot of wastage of society's resources as capabilities of educated people are either not made use of in case of unemployment or are underutilized in case of underemployment massive illiteracy poor enrollment ratio high dropout rate and poor health facilities are other inefficiencies which have not been attended properly people migrate from one place to another in search of better job opportunities and higher salaries it leads to the loss of quality people like doctors engineers etc who have high caliber and are rare in a developing country the cost of such loss of quality human capital is very high this continuous rise in population has adversely affected the quality of human capital it reduces per head availability of the facilities the resources have been diverted towards education which is meant for few people as compared to primary and secondary education due to this reason general productivity of a large section of population of the economy has remained low there is an imbalance between the demand and supply of human resources of various categories especially in case of highly skilled and qualified personnel the presence of such imbalances has resulted in the wastage of resources in respect of education the performance is particularly unsatisfactory in the fields of science and development of modern technology human capital formation in india we have already learnt the human capital formation is the outcome of investments in education health on the job training migration and information of these education and health are the most important sources of human capital formation we know that ours is a federal country with the union government state governments and local governments municipal corporations municipalities and village panchayats 
the constitution of india mentions the functions to be carried out by each level of government accordingly expenditure on both education and health are to be carried out simultaneously by all the three tiers of government now the question is that who takes care of education and health in india whether there is a need for government intervention in education and health sectors it is well known that education and health care services create both private and social benefits and this is the fact that underlines the need for public investment in education along with the private investment expenditure on education and health make substantial long term impact and they cannot be easily reversed hence the government intervention is essential for instance once a child is enrolled in a school or admitted to a healthcare center where the required services are not provided before the decision is taken to shift the child to another institution substantial amount of damage would have been already done moreover individual consumers of these services do not have complete information about the quality of services and their cost in this situation the providers of education and health services acquire monopoly power and are involved in exploitation the role of government in this situation is to ensure that the private service providers of these services adhere to the standards stipulated by the government and charge the correct price in india the ministry of education at the union and state level department of education and various organizations like national council of educational research and training that is ncert university grant commissions ugc and all india council of teacher education that is aicte facilitate institutions which come under the education sector similarly the ministries of health at the union and state level departments of health and various organizations like indian council for medical research icmr facilitate institutions which come under the health sector now let's see education sector in india the expenditure by the government on education is expressed in two ways one as a percentage of total government expenditure two as a percentage of gross domestic product that is gdp the percentage of education expenditure indicates the importance of education in the scheme of things before the government the percentage of education expenditure of gdp expresses how much of our income is being committed to the development of education in the country during 1952 to 2014 education expenditure as a percentage of total government increased from 7.92 to 15.7 and as a percentage of gdp increased from 0.64 to 4.13 still the proportion of public expenditure on the education in india has remained almost constant for three decades since early 50s it started increasing around mid 1980s and there has been considerable improvement in the state of elementary education and inter state disparities in education still public expenditure in india is inadequate it was only 3.1% of gdp in 2014 and 15 whereas the goal is 6% of gdp however private sector investment has been higher on education according to a census 2011 average literacy rate in india is 74.04% as against 18.33% in 1951 as we can see around 1/4 of our population is still illiterate many of the states are below the national average literacy rate and there are interstate disparities kerala has the highest literacy rate of 93.91% and bihar is at the lowest rank with 63.82% it is according to the census 2011 In terms of literacy India ranks lower compared to several Asian countries according to Human Development Report 2011 adult literacy rate was 37.2% in India in 2005 to 2010 as against 6% in China 9.4% in Sri Lanka 4.6% in Philippines and 2.3% in Argentina it is widely believed that the poor performance of india on the literacy front has affected its overall development let's see now the elementary and secondary education 
first elementary education at primary and upper primary school education takes a major share of total education expenditure share of higher or tertiary education institution of higher learning like colleges polytechnics and universities is relatively smaller though on an average the government spends less on tertiary education expenditure per student in tertiary education is higher than that of elementary this does not mean that financial resources should be transferred from tertiary education to elementary education as we expand school education we need more trained educators therefore expenditure on all levels of education should be increased right of the education to free and compulsory education act 2009 that is rte act was passed by the parliament salient features of the rte act include that every child will have free and compulsory education till elementary stage school will be established in the area where there are no schools in the prescribed limit within 3 years central and state are sharing the responsibilities for providing funds for carrying out the provisions of the act it is the duty of the parent or the guardian to admit his or her child to the neighborhood school and no school can deny the admission to any child or collect any capitation fee during the admission let's see now the major government initiatives in school education sector first we can see the sarv shiksha abhiyan it is a major flagship program for universalization of elementary education launched in 2001 it is implemented in partnership with states the major objectives of ssa are first to raise enrollment of children in schools second increase retention of children till upper primary stage third enhance the learning achievements at primary level and upper primary levels provisions of rte act are being implemented through ssa padhe bharat bade bharat this initiative was launched in 2014 under ssa which aims to improve the language development by creating an interest in reading and writing with understanding and to create a positive interest and aptitude in mathematics let's see rashtriya madhyamik shiksha abhiyan the objective of ramsa is popularly known as is to enhance the access to secondary education and to improve its quality this program was introduced in 2009 it also aims at providing universal retention of students in the secondary level education by 2020 apart from these initiatives the other government programs are mid day meal in schools launched in 1995 and kasturba gandhi balika vidyalay kg bv launched in 2004 mid day meal aimed at enhancing enrollment retention and attendance and simultaneously improving the nutritional levels among the children the objective of kg bv scheme was to set up residential schools at upper primary level for girls belonging to particularly to sc st obc minority communities and bpl families higher education let's see higher education is the most powerful tool to build a knowledge based society for future indian higher and technical education system is one of the largest in the world but number of people reaching at the level of higher education is very less so the education system in india is pyramid shaped due to progressively falling number of people reaching the level of higher education there is a need to increase allocation for higher education and improve the standards of higher education institutions so that the students are imparted employable skills in such situations now let's see the gender equity in education the difference in literacy rate between males and females are narrowing it indicates a positive development in gender equity however the education of women needs to be promoted as it would help improve economic independence and social status of women it is also experienced that women's education makes a favorable impact on fertility rate and the health care of women and children now let's see what are the major initiatives that have taken up in health sector immediately after independence the government of india initiated programs for control of epidemic provisions of healthcare services for control and treatment of diseases and programs of training of employees in health department 
for improving medical facilities in the rural areas. Subsequently, under the fifth five-year plan, healthcare programs were integrated with family welfare and nutrition program for vulnerable groups, that is, children, pregnant, and nursing mothers. Subsequently, healthcare facilities were extended to poor people, including rural areas and relatively neglected sections of the society. Hospital facilities, beds, and other resources were enhanced. National Health Mission was launched in 2013 to enable universal access to equitable, affordable, and quality health facilities. Provision of accessible, affordable, and effective primary health care facilities, especially to the poor and vulnerable. Sections of the population needs to be made. Jan Suraksha Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Swasthya Suraksha Yojana, Swachh Bharat Mission are other important initiatives by the government in health sector. There has been significant improvement in the health sectors with these initiatives. Death rate has declined from 27.4 per thousand in 1951 to 7.0 in 2014. Infant mortality rate has also come down from 164 per thousand in 1951 to 40 per thousand in 2013. The life expectancy at birth has risen from 37.2 years for males and 36.2 years for females in 1951 to 65.8 years for males and 69.3 years for females during 2009 to 2013. Still, the availability of healthcare facilities from the public and private sectors taken together is inadequate. The services and facilities are also unaffordable for a large section of population. In 2017, the government has approved the national health policy with a view to reach everyone in a comprehensive way towards well-being of people. Let's conclude. Economic and social benefits of human capital formation and human development are well known. Thus, it is needed that education should be job-oriented with the emphasis on vocational education. India has a rich stock of scientific and technical manpower in the world. Higher and technical education should be planned properly. There is also a need to open more schools, improve the infrastructure, appoint more teachers, provide free textbooks, and improve the quality of education at the school level. The spread of education and health services across different sectors of society should be ensured so as to simultaneously attain economic growth and equity. We need to improve it qualitatively and provide such conditions so that they are utilized in our own country. Human development is based on the idea that education and health are integral to human well-being. It is only when people have the ability to read and apply their knowledge they can derive maximum benefits, which would further enable them to lead a long and healthy life. Investments in education converts human beings into human capital. This enhanced labor productivity results from higher investments with an expectation that it, it will increase future income sources. Investments in education, on the job training, health, migration and information are the sources of human capital formation. The percentage of expenditure on education of the total government expenditure indicates the importance of education in the scheme of things for the government. Healthcare services need to be made more accessible and affordable. Moreover, healthcare is also linked with poverty, sanitation, availability of drinking water, etc., which will need a more holistic and comprehensive planning.